<laughs> so, did anyone get their Metallica mask on Friday? I certainly didn't, uh, but that's okay. <laughs> I got my own mask. Welcome to episode 11 on this countdown to Metallica's Hardwired to Self-Destruct album launch. Yes, we are only 20. Finally, it's been 10 days of this countdown. 20 days away from getting that, oh, that album. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Now today we're going to be talking about the mask, the famous mask. And why would you say, what, a famous mask? Well, <laughs> there is a famous mask if you ask. This is a mask right here, right there. This is a mask and it's... Famous to me, at least. <laughs> it's got a long story behind it. Plus, Roberto Trujillo autographed it in 2012. I don't know if you can see it right there. Why is this mask so important to me, at least? Well, <laughs> it was part of a really good year. That was 2012. This mask brought me a lot of good luck. I wore it to a party in the Hard Rock Cafe where Met Club members gathered uh, prior to all these mm, concerts. And I got to meet Wayne Isham. If you don't know who Wayne Isham is, then you are not a Metallica fan. Well, you are a Metallica fan, but probably not from my era, if you want to say my era. He uh, produced, directed a lot of Metallica videos. So I met him and he found me to be very entertaining and asked me if I wanted to be in a video for the fans. I accepted. And then during those same concerts, I got to win a meet and greet with Metallica. Here's part of that meet and greet. If you guys want to see the full videos, I'll link the videos down below. And lastly, I got to be inside the snake pit. So it brings back a lot of memories, Metallica memories. Plus, there's something of a backstory behind this mask because, hey dude, you could have worn a scary guy mask, you could have worn any other type of mask, a Rey Mysterio mask, but why this one? Well, I'll tell you why. So back in the day, I used to work for a very important television network in Mexico City, the second biggest. So I was called upon to work as a creative advisor for a brand new area in this television network. The area was basically to bring movies and not show them on the TV, but basically on the movie theaters. More like a distributor, maybe like that. So we got a couple of movies coming in and out. I didn't decide which movies were supposed to be bought by the network. I just promoted the movie somehow. Sadly, most of those movies were quite bad. Later that year, uh, while doing my job, uh, we got a brand new project. The project was going to be with the creators of the Mucha Lucha cartoons. You know, Mucha Lucha, Mucha Lucha, those little big-headed luchadores that were on for about maybe two, three seasons, I'm not really sure. So I was psyched about that. The funny thing was that the movie had not really been created yet. It was just being created. It was starting. Basically, the creators were looking for money to start the movie. So they offered the, you know, a partnership with this television network. So I was asked to basically promote this cartoonish movie. So I was so pumped about it. Oh, so amazingly pumped. But I can work with anything because I didn't know what the characters would be looking like or, you know, whatever. It took me several months just to figure out how it would come out. Let me tell you, when I got the first images of this movie that was being made, wow, I was so pumped. So, in the meantime, while the movie was being made, I had to find certain sponsors, you know, people that would pay the license for the characters in the movie to make it even more hyped. In doing so, I had an idea. I decided to call Mexico's biggest wrestling promotion. It's called CMLL. I wanted to cast real life wrestlers to be part of this movie. I mean, 
represent these cartoonish characters in real life and so I went through the casting you know you have to look at a lot of characters a lot of people a lot of luchadores from Mexico to see which one would fit in conjunction with the one that was being made originally as a cartoon so forward a few months and voila I had found him. This luchador orig originally was not called Dragon Rojo, which is the character in the cartoonish movie, Dragon Rojo Jr. He was actually Diamante Negro. And when offered this, you know, do you want to play the character for real? He didn't think about it twice and decided to do it. Now, I tried casting other luchadores and luchadoras, the female uh, wrestlers. Because there is a female character in the movie and other luchadores in the movie. But the budget was really tight and I could only have one. Obviously, it had to be the main character, Dragon Rojo Jr. So a month went by and obviously the wrestler was already wrestling as Dragon Rojo Jr. And people were hyped about him. You know, like, oh, it's a new character. Plus, I would go to the wrestling matches and give out, you know, posters. Just to start hyping everything up for the move. Now, but this time, I was able to finally see, not the final cut, not the final movie, but basically a rough copy of it and it was okay it wasn't what i expected the the mucha lucha characters or characteristics of the characters were not there they didn't have big heads and small bodies plus the story was not that great so i had a lot of sponsors here who were anxious to watch a little bit of the movie and I had the movie on this side, the draft of the movie, which I didn't really enjoy that much. So I kept both of them away away until the last minute, just to get more sponsorship. During this time, I was able to obviously, you know, put the character, the real life character in magazines for a few months. Just like this one over here, you have him down here, and then you have him inside, and obviously, I was promoting the movie and it hadn't even come out yet. I was able to put them on the cover of magazines, you know, like this one for movie and obviously have articles inside with the creator, Eddie Mort. There was another creator, co-creator called Lily Ching. They both worked together at making these cartoons of Mucha Lucha as well. I was even able to put an article inside, you know, gaming magazines. Can you believe that? This is Eddie Mort. And this article was not just one page or two pager. It took about four pages long. I'm not really sure. I don't remember if it was four or more. Yep. Four pages long. Plus, these were the voice actors because the movie obviously was made in English. All the characters would talk like this. One day, I will be a very good luchador, papa. Yes, mijito. You will be a very good luchador, not only here, but also in Mexico where I come from. So for the Mexican audience, we had to get some stars to do the voiceover of the characters. In this case, it was a soap opera actor from back then who made the voice, in this case, for Dragon Rojo Jr. So like a month away from the premiere of the movie, I started, you know, launching a lot of stuff out there. I had Panini albums come out with uh, cards that you have to collect and then you have to paste on these, uh, you know, spaces or numbered spaces and it would tell you a little bit of the story from the movie with all the characters there. That was awesome, Panini. I came out with a perfume for kids. We had for boys and obviously since there's a luchadora, a female wrestler, we also had perfume for girls. And what's so cool about the perfume is that it would come with a surprise toy. <laughs> and these toys were amazing. Right here I have all the characters. This is a female one, Sorpresa. 
This is the weird one, Rayo X. Another one here, and the main character, Dragon Rojo Jr. I don't know if you guys can see it there. And you would get a perfume like this, with the characters on the side. And let's see, I don't know how it smells now. It's been so long, let me see. And this would be like the, the actual perfume here. There we go, I, I want to see. Let's see. Whoa. Okay, not bad. Very childish smell, you know, like, not for babies, for danglers like this one over here. Double-sided. I think you can see him there. Of every single character from the movie. Outside the wrestling arenas, they were already making the Dragon Rojo Jr. mask and all the other characters' masks. They even made small ones, which were like keychains i didn't i didn't think of these but hey they were selling and they were making the movie a little bit more hyped you know so like half a month before the premiere i get the copy of the final cut of the movie and let me tell you it was terrible i was always getting feedback from my boss which you know he would go to all these travel arrangements to california and Hollywood to go see how the movie was doing and he would always come back saying oh it's an awesome movie It's gonna sell just fine. Obviously the dude just wanted to travel and you know get all this paid by the company So the movie wasn't you know what I expected <laughs> so much so that when it came out It didn't do so well actually before I forget like a month and a half before the movie came out we talked about a soundtrack and all the songs in the soundtrack were like taken from uh, libraries and all this all this song let's take this song and all song but there is an epic song epic mexican song by a famous mexican rock band from back then the fun fact of this story is that the luchador is still wrestling and he's one of the most famous wrestlers in mexico so much so that there's a fan <laughs> that takes WWE figures and literally transforms them into Mexican wrestlers. And he made this. This is amazing. I mean, oh my God, this is incredible. Like, how the hell? So it was given to me because obviously I get along with the wrestler and a lot of people in the wrestling fandom got to know me because i was pushing the, the the movie and the character i almost forgot to mention it also came out on dvd and the only place that you could find it was in this place it was like a retail store supermarket this one's still sealed and i believe it had both in english and in spanish you could change it and have subtitles and listen to the original uh, voices or voiceover version. So basically this was one of my many babies that I have uh, brought to life if you will. And that is why this mask is so very important to me. Not just because I took it to the Metallica concerts and I came out in the DVD and I had Lars put on his, you know, <laughs> another mask. I was part of this creation that's still ongoing with the wrestler and it gives me a lot of pride and happiness to actually say I was part of that. Even though the movie didn't do that well, I was part of that. I know my part, the part of the job, was really well done. I didn't have to make the movie. I didn't make it. I did the other stuff and the other stuff was really amazing. So thank you for watching, subscribe, you can punch that button right there, and if you like the video, double punch, double punch on that button. See you guys on the next one. Bye.